Welp, how about it? The first week of November in college football gave us all the thrills that we needed and also all the lows that we needed as well. And November continues the chaos. More and more ranked teams were pushed to the brink, some lost, and we have some victors. You know, we have some victors, you know, that have, you know, won some things. They've won some special prizes over the week. Some special prizes. Not Pole Assassin. Um, unfortunately for Texas, you know, the distraction of, you know, the whole Pole Assassin situation does not change the fact that Texas is not back. Not a good team. I'll say that. I'll say that right now. Uh... Uh, but anyway, anyway, that Texas is not important because, for one, they're not ranked, and neither is Iowa State. But the Big 12 race is shaking up a little bit. We'll talk about that way down the line here. Let's get into conference realignment first. Now, James Madison was the only team, you know, left from that from that um, Sun Belt group of four that you know had to clear some roadblocks to be able to get into the Sun Belt. And they were able to successfully get through all of that. However, CAA has said, you know, we're not going to allow the Dukes to compete for conference championships in most other sports. Now, the FCS, I don't think the FCS is affected by this. There's different, there's different bylaws for the CAA in, you know, FCS football because there's not just CAA teams in the CAA in football. So things are looking different there plus James Madison likely to be a seeded team in the um, in the FCS playoffs and we'll talk about the FCS playoffs when they get here in a couple weeks so you know, I'll be breaking all that down too um, so you know so Marshall Old Dominion Southern Miss and James Madison are all coming to the Sun Belt in 2023 it'll be July 1st 2023 um, there's going to be like a buffer year for James Madison, though. You know, that's how the transition works. So I don't, I, don't, I don't know what that's going to entail for the Dukes, you know, for football at least for next season. Um, but anything's possible. We'll see how that goes. Uh, but congrats to James Madison for getting the call to get on up. They, it's been a long deserved call. How about Conference USA? What are they going to do? Well, we don't know what Western Kentucky and Middle Tennessee are going to do because the MAC hasn't decided everything yet. The presidential meetings were private, so we don't know what the results of that are. But what we do know is that Conference USA has said they are going to add Liberty, Sam Houston State, the defending FCS champions, Jacksonville State, who no longer has John Grass as their head coach, and New Mexico State, and all four of these teams will begin their tenures as CUSA members in the 2023-2024 season, so July 1st, 2023. That's probably when everything's going to start shaking up. That's probably when Texas and Oklahoma are going to leave the Big 12. That's probably when the UCF, Houston, Cincy, and BYU thing is going to happen. Well, BYU is already going to join in 2023, but UCF, Cincy, and Houston those three teams will likely be moving in 2023 as well now uh, and you know at this current moment it's either seven teams for the CUSA or nine depending on what the MAC does and CUSA has to add at least one more team to be you know an FBS conference and unfortunately for that 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 the option that option right now cannot be UMass or UConn. UMass isn't going to want to join the CUSA. They are going to be in the eight ten, you know, like they have been for years and years now. It didn't work out with the MAC, you know, trying to be a football member in a conference, and it just wouldn't work out. You need you need a full member. You can't have half a member. You need a full member. UConn as well is probably not going to work out. Um, that was also rumored. Um, the only other team that really was strongly considered was Missouri State. However, Missouri State is in the Missouri Valley. Missouri Valley, both in basketball, which is where you know 
most of their stuff, you know, you know, most of, most of the things that matter to Missouri State are, and also the Missouri Valley Football Conference, which is the SEC of the FCS. So there's no reason for Missouri State to even move on up to FBS. There's no reason for them to even consider the move because they're in the strongest conference in college football in the FCS, and they're in one of the better basketball conferences, period. So there's no reason for them to move up. So there's like 30 other schools that be that could be considered. I know the rest of the WAC and the A-Sun, they are probably also considered right now. And no, speaking of the WAC and the A-Sun, the WAC and the A-Sun, especially the A-Sun, now that the A-Sun has five members again, going to need to be looking at some you know new members. CAA also potentially looking at new members. I've seen rumors of BMI, Hampton, Howard, Monmouth, um, a Sun, don't really know yet. Murray State, maybe. Whack, I don't know. Incarnate Word and McNeese seem to want to join the Whack, and things have been speculated about that over the past week or two with that whole situation. So there you go with that. Now, we don't have any more winless teams in the FBS because UNLV won against New Mexico today and Arizona beat Cal, but Cal had a problem with COVID protocols to where like 20 plus guys were out, and again, you know, COVID restrictions in Berkeley were very, very severe to the point where these 20 guys, 20 plus guys, it was like 20 to 25 guys missed the game, including Chase Garbers, Cal's quarterback, since starting all season, so you know, ugly game, but Arizona was able to get the victory there. So no more, you know, you know, winless teams in the FBS. And another FCS team made some news today by beating. Speaking of UMass, UMass lost to Rhode Island today. So that is the 11th FCS over FBS upset this year. That's the most in a long time in the F in the FBS FCS debate, you know, with the whole, you know, buy games, money games, whatever you want to call them, you know, stuff like that. All right, now that we got all that out the way, let's get into the games. Let's get into these games here. And this week, Missouri said they were going to do something. Eli Drinkwitz said they were going to do something against you know Georgia. They got out to the early lead, but that's about it. You know, the defense, once again, for Georgia, just dominated this struggling Missouri team. Like, Missouri could never get anything going. He only had six points. Georgia's offense was looking efficient. You know, JT Daniels and Stetson Bennett played in this game. 500 yards of offense for Georgia. They cruise easily. 43-6. How about Ohio State? Ohio State, number five team in the country. Well, defense came in clutch once again for Ohio State. Nebraska continues to blunder and blunder and blunder in key situations when they don't need to be doing you know these types of blunders like we're sitting here we're sitting here with several missed kicks terrible play calls in which you know one of the, which resulted in a missed kick either a missed kick or a punt and I mean you know we're talking Nebraska needs to go for, you know, go for the win in, in these types of situations. But yet, things didn't go too well for Nebraska. Things just did not go too well. It also didn't go well for Ohio State, in my honest opinion. Uh, Ohio State continues to struggle in the red zone, you know, against good defenses. They couldn't get anything going. You know, Stroud can put all those pretty stats up he wants to. He threw 400 yards, but he threw two picks. He's, I've been saying he's not Heisman worthy again, you know. I know that, I know Garrett Wilson was out, um, but, I mean, he's getting carried. He's like Greg McElroy. He's getting carried out here by this other talent for Ohio State. That's what I've been saying. He just doesn't have it. I've been saying that. I don't know why people continue to put him in the Heisman odds. I'll tell you my Heisman odds you know, it, later on in the video because, I mean, we're probably going to be here for a while. Anyway. But yeah, Ohio State barely able to get past Nebraska, so, you know, 
Next up is a team that we'll be talking about in a minute here. Oh boy, this one might be scary for the Buckeyes. Speaking of scared, scary times are ahead in Wake Forest. You know, it was a non-conference game, but yet the defense failed you. Wake Forest, the Demon Deacons. Unfortunately, you know, Sam Hartman, 400 yards again both passing and running the ball. We're talking combined seven more touchdowns for this man. I mean, this just doesn't make any sense. You know, Wake Forest, the defense just could not stop Ty Chandler. He had 200 plus yards rushing. Sam Howell had 200 passing and 100 rushing. You know, this doesn't make any sense. This was a recipe for disaster for Wake Forest. 1,100 yards of offense, North Carolina able to win at the end. Huge, huge victory for the Tar Heels. Saved their season because I thought at one point, you know, you know, we well, we all thought at one point this team was going to challenge Clemson for the ACC championship. And I mean, look at look at how things have been for both Clemson and North Carolina. Things have not been looking too pretty for them. And so this is a huge victory for North Carolina. Huge non-conference victory. Remember that. So this does not affect Wake Forest in the ACC. Um, Wake Forest still is technically unbeaten in the ACC. So, you know, things are going to come to a head next week. So Wake Forest. But we'll talk about Wake Forest's matchup with NC State next week, obviously. How about the Hugh Freeze Bowl? I forgot to mention that Hugh Freeze returns to Liberty. Or rather to Ole Miss, excuse me. But Liberty just did not play well in this game. This game was not as close as the score indicated. Um, Corral played pretty efficient. Ely was also shining. He had like two touchdowns in this game. I mean, this again, this was never as close as the score indicated. Now you got the NFL scouts there. Malik Willis just threw three terrible interceptions in this game. Bad, bad interceptions, you know. I did not watch this game at all. This was not... Again, this wasn't as close as you know people. You know, I didn't. I, I didn't think it, you know this is going to be you know the way it was either. But I mean, here here we were, here we are. You know, with with that. How about Illinois and Minnesota? Well, Chase Brown, Chase Brown did it again. 150 yards on the ground. Illinois continues to upset top 25 teams, and Minnesota's incompetence. You know, I get it. P.J. Fleck just signed a new contract. I get it. Minnesota's been through all sorts of injuries. You know, they've lost, like, what, three running backs now? But, I mean, the bad play calls. Again, bad play calls throughout the game. We're talking can't convert on third downs when you need to. You can't. You, you, I mean, you, you, this, this, is, this is not a recipe for success. You miss. You miss. You don't get the PAT. You don't get two. It was either the two point that they missed or the PAT they missed. You know, I think they either went for two or they missed the PAT. If I'm not mistaken, I didn't. Again, I didn't watch all this game. I only watched a little bit at the end here for Illinois and Nebraska. Never, not Nebraska, Minnesota. Um, unfortunately, you know, you know, again, Minnesota might just drop out the CFP rankings after all. You know. They're still tied technically for the Big Ten West lead, but you know, again, Minnesota, terrible performance against Illinois. Terrible performance. I mean, Illinois couldn't even do anything in the second half. You know, they were up 14 to nothing at half, and they didn't score in the second half. So I don't, I don't know, I don't get it. What a, what a great defensive performance. What a great coaching story by Brett Bielema again. You know, so how about Pitt? Oh, the Pitt Panthers. Oh, boy. Kitty Pickett. Superb. 400-yard, three-touchdown performance. Pitt also ran for 200 yards. And, I mean, you know, the score looked a little bit weird at first, but Pitt eventually just pulled away. Again, the talent level for Pitt this year, the talent, the way this, the way this team has been playing this year, too much for Duke. Too much. You know, 54, 29, too much. I mean, 600 yards of offense, too much. Pitt's likely moving up in these rankings, you know, at some point. How about Idaho? Well, <laughs> why don't we just skip over Idaho State BYU as we get into the 330 slate here? There's nothing to talk about. BYU took care of business against Idaho State. 
they took care of business. But speaking of business being taken care of, Purdue did it again. Another top five team. This time, Michigan State. You know, Faith Thorne, Kenneth Walker, they played excellent in this game. Walker had like 300, or not, not 300, he had like 150 yards rushing. Thorne had like 275 passing, you know. I mean, again, you know, Michigan State. They were playing pretty efficient on offense, but you can't let Aiden O'Connell throw for 500 yards. You can't let David Bell, you know, just go all over you for 200 plus receiving. And I mean, the Michigan State defense, you know, especially the secondary, just failed. They broke. You cannot break like this. And <laughs> we've been talking about this. Like again, you can't. It was already bad enough that you let Kate McNamara, you know, throw for like 300 yards on you. But you let, but, you, but I mean, David Bell was going to just steamroll this Michigan State defense, and that's exactly what he did. Like, Purdue could not, it, like, they could not be stopped. Michigan State could not get off the field, you know. And I know Michigan State's probably going to blame, you know, oh well, there was a, there was a ball that was, you know. It was a um, joint possession ball. No, it was picked off. It was picked off. Uh, it was clear as day picked off. Um, you know, again, I mean, this was just this was just not the defensive performance that Michigan State needed. I mean, you got Ohio State coming up. You still got Penn State. You know, this is not this is not the way to go. This is not the way to take an L like that. You got you basically got smacked in the air by Purdue. You got smacked in the air. That's that's it for Michigan State. So somebody's moving up, and that somebody might be Cincinnati. But don't hold your breath on that one. I don't know if Cincinnati's going to move up at all. You know, I, I think Cincinnati actually. You know, uh, now that I've reflected, now that we've had a week to reflect on these rankings, I think Cincinnati's in the right place um, where they are right now. You know, again, things are going to happen in front of them and behind them, and that has already happened today. So, you know, things are looking a little bit up for Cincinnati. So they had to play well. You know, game day came to town, so things had to go well. Defense, once again, for Cincinnati shined. I mean, what can I say? You know, again, another great defensive performance by Cincinnati. They bended on multiple occasions, but they never broke. You know, they, you know, this, you know, Desmond Ritter played pretty well, but a fumble late, you know, by Ritter when, you know, Cincinnati's just trying to advance the ball out the end zone could have been a disaster if it weren't for this defense. Punching the ball out as Tulsa's quarterback tried to dive over the end zone line to get the touchdown, and unfortunately for Tulsa, another close game in which they lose, because that's Tulsa football in a nutshell, and Cincinnati, unfortunately, unfortunately for Cincinnati, not the way you want to win, especially with the way today went, not the way you want to win, and it does not help, it does not help that the American is not strong this year. It's not a strong conference, and I think that's why. That is why Fresno State and San Diego State were ranked and are ranked. You know, that's that's why. Again, SMU lost to Memphis today. Houston barely getting by South Florida. They won by 12, but it didn't feel like you know they won by 12 because South Florida had put up 42 points on Houston. So things did not help Houston. They were out of Cincinnati today, you know. Again, a lot of people, are, you know, a lot of people are going to go to strength of schedule. That's what we have to go to, you know. Again, you know, you, you have to go to strength of schedule. That's, that's the same thing with the FCS. And all, uh, yeah, you know, you have to go to strength the schedule. And the Americans just not strong this year. I mean, just faith. Let's just face facts. The Americans not strong this year. UCF could have been a lot better. Injuries destroyed them. SMU's lost two straight now. Houston had a loss to a bad Texas Tech team. Admittedly, Texas Tech team. Excuse me, not bad. They're not bad. They're not Texas. <laughs> They're not my Texas Longhorns. <sighs> trying to focus. I'm, try I'm, tr I'm trying not to break down about the Texas Longhorns out here tonight. Um, <laughs> but yeah. 
Cincinnati, you're still in a great place. There's still three weeks in the regular season and conference championships to go. So things will be fine. Navy got dominated by Notre Dame. Let's, I mean, things are clicking for the Irish at the right time. You know, Jack Cohn's playing efficient. Kyron Williams playing efficient. I mean, everything's just clicking for Notre Dame right now. Again, you know, things are looking pretty bright for the Fighting Irish as they continue their winning streak. Oklahoma State also took care of business against West Virginia. West Virginia only had 133 yards in this game. Great defensive performance there by the Cowboys. They'll be moving up too. They'll be moving up. A team that won't be moving up in the team that Oklahoma State beat, Baylor. How do you how do you let Chandler Morris, son of Chad Morris, throw for 461 on you? He's a freshman making his first start. There's no Gary Patterson here either. Remember? He left TCU. TCU's defense was able to pick off Gary Bohannon twice, including the game ceiling pick after TCU doing a field goal. Like, this this is not what Baylor wanted. This is not what Baylor wanted here now. This is not what you wanted here. And unfortunately for Baylor, they're going to be sliding a little bit down the rankings. You know, they're going to be sliding a little bit, you know, out of the Big 12 picture for the moment. You know, they still... You know, there's, there's still a huge opportunity for Baylor in the next couple of weeks. You know, still huge opportunities for Baylor to get to the Big 12 championship. But you can't lose. You cannot lose to TCU. You can't lose to a TCU team that has just not looked very good the entire season. You know, I mean, an inconsistent TCU team that got, that basically had, you know, that Gary Patterson just left. This, this isn't what you want here. This isn't what you want at all. And how about Auburn and Texas A&M, the only top 25 matchup of the week. And this game was rough for the first, you know, two or three quarters. A couple missed kicks by both teams, but A&M's defense was able to harass Bo Nix, especially in the second half. This was, you know, this was rough for poor old Bo Nix. I mean man just dropped the ball and I mean he, he just simply dropped the ball which resulted in a fumble scoop score for A&M and that's when basically the defensive route started you know for Texas A&M and Texas A&M is now in a better position they're in better position now to win the SEC because things are looking pretty spicy in the West things are looking pretty spicy in the the SEC West now. Wisconsin, what a fantastic performance by Graham Mertz. I'm surprised. They threw for three touchdowns, 240 in the air. I'm really surprised at that because, I mean, again, he, he, he doesn't, he, you know, Wisconsin has limited him, you know, throughout the past month or so. He's, they've limited in what he can do as far as throwing the ball. So the fact that he threw it 11 for 16, 240, three TDs through the air, crazy stuff. Wisconsin run game on point once again, 300 plus rushing yards. Poor Rutgers, man, I thought this team was better early in the season, but I mean, yes, not now. Still the same old Rutgers, same old Rutgers. Tisk tisk. Oh boy. And despite Will Rogers, you know, for Mississippi State, you know, throwing it for 400 yards, four touchdowns against this Arkansas defense, Mississippi State missed three field goals. Three field goals. You know, and this Razorback trio, you know, Burks, KJ Jefferson, Dominique Johnson, they were able to get through, they were able to play well. All three were able to play well, and that's how Mississippi State took that L. Dominique Johnson with the game winner, I believe, you know, late in the game. So, you know, Mississippi State got to be feeling themselves right now. Four losses for Mississippi State. Four, you know, two of them are bad. Two of them I can understand. You know, this one's another one that's just understandable in all honesty. You know, three bad, you can't miss kicks. 
I mean, I get, I get the meme of college kickers, but you just can't. You just, it just doesn't make any sense. You have one job. You have a single job. You, you know, if you're a kicker, you have one job, and you mess it up three times. It doesn't make any sense. NC State, you know, with another huge game from Devin Leary. You know, NC State scored a touchdown in all four quarters. Four passing TDs by Leary. You know, there was a little bit of a surge by Florida State in the third quarter. But, again, NC State took care of business. Beat Florida State. Keeps pace with Wake Forest in the ACC Atlantic. And now that sets up a huge showdown. Probably going to be, it's going to be one of my six picks of the week next week. So, you know, it is, that that's obvious. Um, you know, so NC State, Wake Forest probably going to decide the Atlantic next week at some point, you know. You know it, it, I mean, things still are a little bit shaky in the Atlantic right now, but the ACC, you know, potentially playoff hopes are probably done, you know, like 99% done, you know, it, it's just, you know, you know, things do change, things get a little weird in college football like they have been. So, the ACC championships, the only thing NC State and Wake Forest have now, you know, that, that could be happening. So, see what this, we'll see what that matchup brings us next week. Um, as we move into the 7 Eastern slate, there's, you know, there's a couple of games here. Now, one game I forgot, actually. I forgot a game from the preview here. And I'll talk about it first. Uh, again, I forgot the preview, Indiana-Michigan. I believe I, 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 I don't know why I forgot this in my notes. It's terrible, terrible by me. Um, it didn't matter that I didn't preview this game because unfortunately for Indiana, who probably has the gauntlet schedule in college football, because I swear they've taken on everybody. Everybody in the everybody in college football, you know, gets to play Indiana as a ranked team and gets to steamroll them or get by them easily. But this was a case of Michigan getting by Indiana easily. Less than 200 yards by Indiana. Michigan had 400 plus. Son Haskins, 168 on the ground. McManera, you know, with 168 through the air. A couple touchdowns, I believe. Michigan efficient once again. Defense dominating once again. Easy, easy victory for the Wolverines. They are... We all thought, you know, for a second there, they were out of the Big Ten East race. They are not. They are not out of this race yet. And how about Oregon, Washington? I mean, this is just. I mean, what can you say about Anthony Brown that has been said already? It's either going to be a fantastic game from him, or it's going to be a rough game. And unfortunately, in the rain, of course, in the rain out in Washington, it was a rough game. Rough game. Brown, but luckily, you know, Travis Dye came in, got got a good effort, 200 yards rushing. I mean, the Ducks defense, you know, saved Anthony Brown as well. I mean, this Ducks defense, you know, despite, you know, a couple bad plays, you know, at, at points in this game, defense was able to get it done. Less than 200 yards for Washington, including a comical play towards the end of the game in which, you know, Washington just, they tried to punt the ball, you know, down only eight, needing a first down, you need to try and, you know, keep, keep the game alive, but no, we're going to punt, and the punt went disastrous to the point where Washington, you know, committed a safety, and thus Oregon able to get the 10-point victory over Washington you know, on Saturday Night Football on ABC. So there you go with that. How about little old UTSA, who might be ranked? We don't know yet. We don't know what the committee will be thinking. Again, you know, the Roadrunners dominated UT UTEP. Poor UTEP. You know, I mean, this was just a beating from start to finish. A beating from start to finish. I mean, we're talking Sincere McCormick on the first play of the game took it to the house. And UTSA continues to win. Again, CUSA, it looks like it could be a log jam in the East. And the West, 
you know, could just come to UTSA. It, it could fall into UTSA's lap after it was unable to last year due to COVID. And so there you go. Congrats to UTSA, keeping their undefeated season alive. There's only, what, four unbeatens left? Yeah, four. Just four unbeatens left in college football. Last but not least, the number 24 ranked team in the nation, you know, San Diego State. Dominant defense once again. Punting again for San Diego State. A fake field goal play too. You know, able to able, that was that was enough. That was just enough. You know, I don't think a lot of people in San Diego, you know, are comfortable with the passing game because I mean Lucas Johnson just ain't it. You know the way things have been for San Diego State on offense, you know, run first. That's clearly what they do. Passing game, non-existent. Pretty non-existent. Oh wait, I forgot I forgot some games here. My bad. Excuse me. I forgot I forgot these other seven Eastern games. So, you know, why don't we back up a little bit? Back up, let's back up. Let's back up. Back up, back it up, back it up. Yeah, there we go. Boise State, Fresno State. Speaking of, you know, the Mountain West, Fresno State got dominated by Boise State. This wasn't even close. Three horrible interceptions from Jay Kaner. Horrible, horrible picks. You know, the Broncos run game, efficient. You know, Boise took care of business against Fresno State. Took them to the woodshed. Stole all their lunch money. Fresno State's dropping out these rankings. You know, dropping right out these rankings. <laughs> dropping right out. Tennessee. How about Tennessee? You want some whiskey tonight, boys? You want some whiskey? Because we're going to get some whiskey. Hendon Hooker. Four huge touchdowns. Key defensive stop late by the Vols. And, you know, Tennessee had the ball for only 14 minutes of game time in this game. Three straight losses for Kentucky. Got a feel for that. I mean, you know, Kentucky's bowl eligible, but that's that's really the only saving race here. Three losses, all in a row, for Kentucky. There's going to be a QB controversy, you know, out in Iowa though. You know, Alex Padilla replacing Spencer Petrus, and Iowa. You know, they only beat Northwestern by five. Again, QB controversy there. You know, Big Ten West. A log jam right now about LSU and Alabama as we wrap it up here with the number two team in the country Will Anderson what a performance by this man 12 what 12 13 tackles in this game a sack and a half just damn good performance in this game defense for Alabama came in clutch you know Max Johnson at Ogeron came with their best effort but Ogeron, unfortunately, decided to go through the Lane Kiffin bag of tricks and, you know, use, you know, three terrible, we're talking like the LSU had three chances inside Alabama territory to get, you know, a touchdown to go get in the lead with Alabama. You know, on like three or four separate occasions that LSU could not capitalize on any of them. One of them was obviously, you know, at late stages in the game, but I mean, they got to the 30-yard line, you know, with like two or three seconds left. But the other, you know, occasion, one such occasion in which LSU did not kick the field goal, they went for it on fourth and eight. Failure. Failure. You don't do that. Why do coaches continue to make stupid decisions? There was like seven minutes left to go, yet the defense had all the momentum, you know, uh, it just doesn't make any sense. It just does not make any sense. Like, why, why are co why are coaches becoming dumb? Why are coaches using analytics, and stuff like that? It doesn't make any sense. Like, the armchair QB is, you know, like myself, and just sitting here, like, what? What are you doing? Why are you going for it with seven minutes left to go? It doesn't make any sense. It does not make any sense at all, at all. And that's why LSU, you know, loses this game. You know. He had terrible coaching decisions. I mean, again, shades of less miles early. I mean, that pick, that punt fake, you know, pass was just crazy. That punt fake pass was just a beautiful play early in the game. But I mean, too many mistakes by LSU. 
and that's why LSU loses this game. So there you go. That's that's it. So we'll see. You know, next week, you know what the committee is going to do. That'll be it between the Champions Classic. So that'll be like seven, eight o'clock. You know, next week. Yeah, like seven or eight o'clock next week. I'm, I live in the Central Time, so that's why I'm saying Central. I think that's like you know nine Eastern or something like that on the East Coast. So that's gonna be late, late, late for those CFP rankings. So we'll see what the CFP says, you know, next week because I'm curious, you know, too because there's gonna be some movement. There's going to be some movement. There is going to be some movement. You got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven top 25 teams falling seven more in a week you know that a lot of people said oh well, this is gonna be cupcake week this is cupcake week guys this is one of those cupcake weeks that don't mean anything guys you know everybody's gonna be fine everything's gonna be fine and things were not fine things were not fine at all so yeah a lot to cover this week you know, and things are going to get even crazier next week. I cannot wait, everybody. November 13th, going to be one hell of a weekend. You know, starting on that Friday night, you know, probably with Cincinnati. And things are going to get crazier and crazier from there. I'll see you all in, yeah, about 10 hours or so. Because I'm going to be putting out something, you know, that's going to be coming out you know, to preview for another college sport that, you know, I applied in my, um, in my, um, whatchamacallit, my channel update, yeah, it's coming, that's coming soon, it's coming out, you know, again, that'll come out later on today, because it's Sunday now, clocks are going to be changing, so that'll be like 10 to 11 hours from now, that you'll be seeing the next video that I put up here, so... Again, hope y'all take care and, you know, have a good night. And I'll see you all in the morning with more college content. Good night, everybody.